Hi there, it's Lisa from Barclay Jones and I'm here today to talk to you about the recruiter experience. We hear a lot about candidate experience and improving client experience, but I am fixated on recruiter experience, especially right now. Although I have been writing about it for a few years, so here we go. Now, we may or may not be connected on LinkedIn, fix that problem, but if you want to book a call with me as a result of this presentation, scan this QR code, we'll show it at the end as well. It'll take you to my diary, you can press a button and book yourselves in. Off we go. So my business does three things for recruiters. We train them to be more effective on things like Bullhorn, Adapt, Job Adverts, LinkedIn, business development, account management, improving speed. And we are fixated on saving every recruiter in the UK and beyond an hour a day each, 30 days a year basically, so they can make more money. We are also fixated on the way that you use systems within your business and that you don't have too many systems and not enough process. We regularly review the tech stacks of our recruitment clients, help them save money by cancelling stuff they don't need and investing in stuff that they do to automate the process as effectively as possible. And we work with great marketeers to help them generate what we call the four C's, candidates, clients, colleagues and cash. Start this medium today with looking at where you are on this ready reckoner. We're on a mission to save you an hour a day. Where are you in your annual target? We know it's trying times right now, but we need more time in our day to make more money. And the way to do that is to figure out what we can cut so we can spend more time doing the things we really need to do. So look at this ready reckoner and figure out if you saved an hour a day, what's the potential for your billings? So now I've set the scene, we're going to talk about the state of recruitment pre-COVID. We're going to look at the impact of that and what we need to do to fix it going forward in terms of the recruiter, the recruiter experience. One little note, we are mere mortals. I know in recruitment we think we're superhuman and most of us are. But as mere mortals, we do forget most of what we're told. In fact, 90% of what I tell you today, you will forget within a week. Not great. I'm going to do my best to make some of this stick, but you're going to have to write some stuff down and take action on what you learn. But note, again, very few of us have ever delivered any training or presentations. And the people that we've delivered to have gone out of the door straight away like robots and delivered everything that you've told them to. We're just not built that way. So make sure you take action on what you learn today. Write it down, make it stick. So I'm fixated on the four C's candidates, clients, colleagues, and cash. Recruitment in itself is a simple process, often marred by too much data, too many systems, not enough time or process. That can really cock up the recruiter experience. So let's look at the state of recruitment pre-COVID. We're hearing a lot of people say, we want to go back to the way things were, but equally I'm hearing a lot of people starting to say, was it that great? Now, you probably had more robust pipelines, absolutely. But a lot of the recruitment leaders I was working with pre-COVID also had some significant issues in their business that they just wanted to magic away. Now, this article that McKinsey wrote back in May this year, before we kind of started entering a second, third or fourth wave, really nailed it. But I want you to go and find this article on Google. It's really grounding. It really helps us understand we need to dig deep, get some energy, have some goals. Because the state of recruitment pre-COVID wasn't great. It was hard work made harder by candidates not loving us, made harder by not all of our salespeople being particularly effective and made even harder by an attrition rate that we would not use as an example of why to work with us. Equally, our recruiters were spending too long sourcing, sourcing for candidates they already had and not following up the leads that they were working so hard to generate. That then led to a high level of attrition, as we've said, which in itself was normally led by a lack of training. This data comes from the CIPD. And not only that, the 10 grand of starting a new recruiter from scratch came from my clients when I spoke to them and said, what does it cost on average to replace a recruiter and how long does it take to get them billing again? This isn't good data. Before COVID, did you have too many applications and not enough great candidates? Or maybe too many leads, but not enough great clients? Maybe too many jobs, not enough placements? And you might have made a placement, but were you happy with the commission or fee that you generated on the back of that? Was this because you just had too much data and not enough information to actually run your business or your desk? Maybe you had too many systems, you didn't know where to start, and not enough process, not enough simple process to put the great candidates next to great jobs and make that placement and send that invoice. Was this down to not enough time to be effective and absolutely not enough training to know what the process was and ultimately how to tackle those hard to please candidates and clients? 
I see a lot of myths in the recruitment industry and they fox me. The technology is going to be intuitive. People should know what they're doing. That actually by automating your recruitment process, we don't have as much need for humans anymore. Or actually, I've automated, I've got you all this stuff. Why can't you just pick up the phone? Maybe they're not picking up the phone because they've got too much stuff. And actually, there's a lot of theory out there that recruitment's never been easier. And obviously, this results in the following impact, that candidate experience is pretty poor. And it's not helpful when candidates bugger off when you're doing so much work with them, or maybe perceived work. Clients as well, mm, not massively happy. Although the fact that 32% of clients will stick with you even if the, cap the client service is poor is interesting. That's a USP. But poor recruiter experience has a massive impact on our data, systems, process and fees. Makes them quit, makes them procrastinate, makes them do all of the wrong things. And again, I work with lots of recruitment leaders that say, why can't they just get on the phone? And now we've lost time. So we're losing candidates, clients and colleagues and cash and time. But actually, some of us are drowning in candidates right now. When I'm speaking to clients about improving their job adverts, for example, they say, no, 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 we're drowning in candidates. And I'll go, it's kind of why you need to improve your job adverts. There's too many candidates applying for great jobs. You need to whittle that down. And recruiters are not best placed to do that sometimes if they're drowning. And the working from home concept, concept that's now a reality. Pre-COVID, these stats were interesting. Actually, working from home was awesome if you were set up right. Now we've had to adapt to this. And sometimes when you adapt, it's stressful. But actually what a lot of people have learned is by not traveling for two hours a day, they probably get an extra couple of hours work done. Think about it. Where are you watching this webinar from right now? But are you set up to work from home? The data is compelling. It tells us that working from home can be super effective. But actually in some cases it's not. And it's not ineffective because it doesn't work. It just might be ineffective because of the way it's set up, the way that managers necess weren't necessarily ready to lead, the systems weren't set up to work from home, and the recruiters were not trained to use those systems or deliver a process at their desks, let alone at the kitchen table. So we need to sort that out. Because waiting to get back into the office and going, we're back to where we were, isn't a strategy. We've seen that in recent weeks where there's the on off switch. So what's the solution? Well, the solution isn't buying loads more tech and delivering loads more training and having loads more candidates. It's admitting, first of all, that the recruiters that you may have kept throughout this really trying time are probably not going to say, I need help. They might demonstrate it through activity, but they're definitely not going to scream it. But actually, now is the time to lead. Now is the time to say, what do I want my business to be? Now, this isn't necessarily a pet talk, but you're spending time on your business by watching this webinar, writing things down, I'm hoping. And I've done some webinars recently with the REC and APSCO and people like Bullhorn, etc. And the one thing that's running through all of this is the leadership needs to take control of their businesses because waiting for someone else to do it is not going to fix things. It's going to be a while before we get back to a new normal. There's maybe going to be several new normals in the meantime, but the one constant is going to be candidates, clients, colleagues, and cash, and the systems that you use and the process that you want to deliver. Now's the time to reflect on all of those things, stare them in the eye, and take action. Because recruitment is a time game. We know this speed is so crucial to the way that we deliver. So look at that grid again. Where are you in your team? Where are your marketeers on that team? What are your marketeers actually? What are they doing on reflection to generate more time for your recruiters? If they've just come back to work from furlough or maybe they've been working throughout, what are they fixated on? If you give an average 10 person recruitment team an extra hour, what is that gonna do for your business? And that's an hour a day, 30 days a year. You'll have more candidates to place or more time to place those candidates because the really good ones are on and off the market in a blink of an eye whilst you're sifting through all of the ones that aren't the best because they applied to your job because it wasn't that great to begin with. Clearly, you need to find new clients. Business development is a critical skill and process that maybe wasn't focused on too much before COVID, but right now is a really big deal. You need more time to pick that phone up and you need more time to have the right levels of conversations with people that potentially weren't in the buying zone when they pick the phone up. 
You equally need to work really hard to keep your existing clients. The data speaks for itself. You've got more chance of doing that. So what are your marketers and your recruiters doing right now as part of their daily processes to focus on the clients you've worked with in the recent years and keep them focused on you? But how do you do all of this? You're busy, you're distracted. Who knows what's happening on the news right now? But focus on this. You can surround yourself with systems, but if the people who use them don't know how to use them and don't get your process, You've just given lots of money to recruitment tech suppliers. Great for them. So if you've got untrained recruiters and unoptimized systems, and maybe too many of them, and not very clear processes, nothing's gonna change. In fact, it's gonna get worse because we're becoming more technology automated. Your clients certainly are. Your candidates definitely have that level of expectation. But unfortunately, at the heart of all of this, at the heart of recruitment, she says, unfortunately, is people. They can really mess things up. I've been in IT for a number of years and the problem is always, always between the chair and the keyboard. We're not that great as beings. We have crap attention spans and any of you with teenagers knows we have very short term memories. Any of you over 40 knows. Left handed people though could be part of your advertising campaign. Be careful. Have better memories. We have worse memories when we've had a drink, not great during COVID time. And we think about so many things throughout the day, we're probably not focused on the things we need to focus on. Remember, 90% of what I'm telling you today, you're gonna to forget. 90% of all the things you're watching at the Rec Expo, you're gonna forget. So make sure the notes you've taken across all of these webinars, you note down, you write down, you meet with your team over Zoom or Teams, face-to-face, -face, take some action. So training in the traditional sense, one to two to five to six hours a day, doesn't work anymore. It kind of never did. But actually the data for the last couple of years tells us that 94% of people out there that receive training prefer short, sharp bursts. High intensity interval training is not just for gym bunnies. It's for people that want to retain. Those of you that do go to the gym or maybe do the gym from home, do hit. They focus on a muscle group, you focus on a muscle group, you burn some calories, you benefit from the endorphins and they last you the whole day. But meanwhile, off you go. You improve your process. You improve the way you pick up a weight. We're fixated on saving time as recruiters. We need more time to please our candidates and clients and finance directors. But we can't spend all day being trained on something and then not retain it. The only people making money from that process are your trainers or your training company. So we need to fixate on how to deliver shorter, sharper bursts of knowledge continuously. It is great. Micro learning is great. And equally, it's only going to work if it's continuous. It has to happen all the time, even if it's 15 to 20 minutes a day. We know we're much more likely to have a fitter body if we do the right level of hit over a, over a period of days and we focus on the muscle groups that we really want to change. So now's the time to start doing that recruiters and recruitment leaders. But what about our systems? If you've spent years hoarding data and not coding it up, you'll end up buying more tech just to see what you've got. That's not a good solution. Equally, if you're assuming that automation is gonna fix all your problems, it really won't because you still need humans to think about what automations are gonna fix your problems and then create those automations for you. Actually, we have found over the years of working with plenty of recruiters that the more tech and systems you give them, the more distracted and the more they procrastinate, which again, the stats aren't in your favor. We are only human. And actually what we do is we really downgrade the recruiter experience by buying them lots of shiny things. So again, fixate on the recruiter experience. How are we going to improve it? How are we going to get back the people that have been on furlough who have probably forgotten a lot of the skills that they had? Any of you who have been on holiday, maternity leave, parental leave for a period of time knows what that can feel like. Furlough is no different. Working part-time is no different. Working full-time while everyone else is on furlough, stressful and guilt-ridden. So we want to save you time. Think about how you're going to do that right now, to save five hours a week, 30 days a year. What are you going to do with it though? Saving time's great. What do you want to do with it? Do you want to make more calls? Are you going to change your KPIs? Are you going to clean up your data? Are you going to manage your clients and candidates harder than you ever have? Or are you just going to get some sleep? So I want to fixate now, that's a good word for today, on what I think you need to focus on to give you some practical takeaways. Look at your processes, really look them in the eye. 
Are they clear enough for the people working from home to follow them and not get distracted and not be, well, not be upset or morale demoralized because they really don't know what they're doing? Look at your process. Now, interestingly, I'm all about recruitment process. I'm all about cutting bits out that we don't need and speeding things up that we do. But interestingly, when you do an online search for recruitment process graphics, there's very little out there. What does that say? I've had to create my own. What do you think? But let's fixate again on how recruiters are more effective. Let's think about their develop business development processes, how they manage accounts once they win them. What are they doing about their sourcing and advertising? What are they doing about their screening and how are they sending out CVs? Are they generating leads from this entire process as well as fulfilling on the one they've got? What's their placement and onboarding process like? And more importantly, what are they doing with those candidates and clients beyond the placement process? And are their systems effective and are they driving great recruitment processes? Are your recruiters accountable for the processes that they're delivering? And maybe you fixate on one of those triangles and that's where you'll get your hour back. A cute tip is to get dad. So look at your process. Do you really need to do it? If you do, could you automate it? If you can't, could you delegate it to someone else? Because you can't do it for yourself. And if you get to the end of that quick reckon, do you still really need to do it? Could you just get rid? Another thing you can do to save an hour a day is to look at your tech stack. Really look it in the eye grab it. Don't just say, we're not making any money from it, let's get rid. Say, could we be making money from it? There are so many uh, really rewarding bits of technology out there, but they need to reward you, not just the technology people that you're buying them from. So have a look at your business process and figure out where the technology is going to speed it up. And if it doesn't, and it doesn't add any value to the process, get rid. Think about not spending stupid amounts of money, and this is a live case study of one of my existing clients, 25 staff not delivering to target and spending an in excess of 200,000 pounds not using their CRM system. Crazy. So think about how dad's gonna help you with that. Think about your processes, are your systems geared up? And are your systems actually geared up to solve your problems, not just deliver your process, because sometimes they're separate. And then the final thing all leaders have to do is admit that their staff are probably either unconsciously incompetent or consciously incompetent, but really don't want to put their hand up. It's a risky time for anyone to say, I don't know what I'm doing, or I don't think I'm being as effective as I could be. Let's not wait for the figures to point out that obvious statement. Focus on your process. Obviously, I have a product that can help with that called Recruitment Hit. Now, if you want to save time this year and next, you might want to try out our recruitment hit, High Intensity Interval Training for Recruiters. Grab your phone, get your camera app out, grab that graphic, and book a slot to have a quick go at the system. People who have goals are 10 times more likely to achieve them. Think about what your goals need to be for the next three to six to nine to 12 months and smash them. Think about your recruiter experience and how you're going to improve that. Clarify your processes, streamline them, kiss them. Think about your systems, make them intuitive. Don't just assume they are. And then make sure the people pressing the buttons, delivering the systems and processes, get what they're doing and they're engaged and they're happy. That's your action plan. Good luck with the rest of this year and next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the webinars at the Rec Expo. Grab that graphic, book a call with me. I look forward to meeting up with you. Take care.